Hello, I'm Thomas Brophy, president of California Institute for Human Science University. Check us out at www.chs.edu. And my presentation today is A Theory Toward a Quantum Physics Friendly Ontology of Free Will. I'll be talking about ontologically, how does conscious agency work? and uh, moving forward, the development of what I call a theory or actual theory. So the outline of this talk, first I will review uh, how I've been developing this a theory through uh, uh, the past two Tucson Science of Consciousness conferences, 2017 and 2018. And you can uh, see a, a YouTube video of my 2018 Tucson talk um, at the YouTube location uh, listed here. And this presentation will advance uh, the previous development uh, by adding an application of non-Aristotelian logic from Hiroshi Motoyama's Logic of Not and including a trans-temporal and trans-spatial uh, metaphysical mechanisms. So in the previous uh, presentations, I first focused on the uh, quantum physical reality being uh, not causally closed. <clears throat> and using that to uh, connect physical and conscious realities through a uh, born rule consistent unique events approach. And previously I compared with M property theory as, uh, as uh, uh, advanced by McQueen and Chalmers and compared with orc or theory, uh, of course, as uh, advanced by Hameroff and Penrose, and talked a little bit about compar comparison with integrated information theory, and uh, uh, concluded uh, in previous presentation that uh, the mechanisms of A theory, when it's completed, will necessarily be very strange. So a bit of history of uh, Tucson conferences uh, on this topic, as, as I see it, uh, uh, around the time the conferences started, uh, I believe uh, quantum effects were believed generally not likely to be uh, uh, possible to be involved in consciousness events in the brain. There was a paper by Tegmark on uh, decoherence, uh, physical decoherence, uh, uh, seeming to disprove that possibility. And essentially, uh, classical physicalist models of consciousness, uh, an epiphenomenalist approach, were deemed generally the uh, seriously scientific uh, uh, only approaches. Uh, and causal closure of the physical was generally accepted to be the case. Uh, now, I think uh, it's fair to say that quantum effects of many times are accepted to occur all uh, in many places in biology and including in the brain. Uh, there are magnetic field sensors in birds with quantum uh, uh, effects important and uh, photosynthesis in plants. Uh, and uh, Hameroff, Hameroff uh, published a paper um, uh, addressing Tegmark's uh, decoherence arguments to revive the possibility of quantum uh, microtubule effects in the brain, um, and many other many other quantum effects in biology generally. Quantum physics is now necessarily uh, believed to have something to do with consciousness uh, necessarily because of the uh, simple fact of the experimenters choice, conscious choice, uh, affecting uh, the uh, quantum measurement problem in, in, in when a measurement is made. Um, and if conscious uh, physical agency does happen, I think uh, uh, that it involves quantum non-closure of the physical uh, is probably uh, involved in the mechanism of how it happens. I think that's generally uh, an expanding camp of, uh, of uh, scholars will Take that approach now. Um, and now, quote, everyone is a panpsychist or a panexperientialist. Uh, quote, everyone, not really everyone, but uh, it's a very uh, large growing camp. Uh, and now, cause of closure of the physical is uh, considered an outdated notion. I believe. So, but back to uh, why. Uh, the physicalist claim is interactionist dualist theories of consciousness are impossible because they violate the law of conservation of energy. The physical universe must be causally closed. Therefore, consciousness cannot have causal agency, is the view. But that's false. Now, why is it false? Well, according to the standard textbook quantum mechanics, 
physical systems evolve according to two different processes. The, uh, the uh, systems evolve according to a deterministic process uh, governed by the Schrodinger equation until the measurement or a reduction occurs or collapse occurs in the wave to a particular observation, and this is a non-deterministic process. Non-deterministic. I'm going to skip over this cartoon of uh, such a process, and on this uh, slide that uh, uh, has uh, some of the basic math of, of how a uh, quantum event uh, uh, probability distribution collapses, I will focus only on this blue part, uh, the Born interpretation, or called the Born, Born rule, is the idea that uh, the magnitude squared of the uh, psi wave function is, is, is interpreted as the probability of a particular observation uh, happening. And that was postulate of Born. It's now called the Born rule. But uh, in a single unique event, uh, whatever, quote, chooses a particular outcome of that event um, uh, conserves energy because uh, all the different possible outcomes of the event have the same possible energy according to the proper solutions of the Schrodinger equation. So that is why uh, uh, you do not have to con uh, violate conservation of energy to um, uh, have something uh, outside of the system possibly affect the uh, outcome of the system during the collapse or reduction process. So what is, the question is, what is the actual reality uh, uh, that the Born rule arises out of? How does the universe operate when implementing the Born rule? Uh, standard quantum physics says nothing about unique single events except for the probability distributions. Quantum physics only applies to statistical ensembles of large numbers of identical systems. And uh, that's a bummer because uh, a lot of what is interesting about reality turns out to be, of course, unique single events, not infinite ensembles of uh, identical uh, uh, event systems. Uh, such as a, a, a um, world record pole vault is a unique event. So in previous presentation, I went also over the, uh, the uh, strong free will theorem of uh, Conway and Cochin. Uh, I won't go through that again, except to uh, highlight uh, uh, in blue here that uh, they concluded generally that if humans have free will, uh, through this argument, through this uh, proof, uh, then elementary particles do too, uh, in some sense. And... Um, uh, the correlation of distant par particles of these types of systems, Bell systems or the specific system uh, studied in uh, Conway and Cochin's uh, paper, uh, the correlations of distant uh, events are relativistically invariant. Um, so that means that even superluminal explanations cannot explain the behavior. And this is profoundly bizarre. Uh, uh, but these, these events still do follow the Born rule in some sense, and that large numbers of repetitions yield uh, outcome frequencies consistent with the Born, Born rule. So, thus, uh, consciousness on this model of the free will aspect operates somehow via the state reduction, the quantum collapse, uh, the Born rule collapse. Uh, we call this a Born process, <clears throat> and uh, call this category of theories uh, actual theory or a theory. There is another group of theories uh, that do pro propose uh, the Born rule as an approximation or summary uh, to a deeper or more detailed theory. These are GRW theories. Um, <clears throat> so um, uh, uh, Born rule is not a GRW theory, but it's, uh, I mean, a theory is not a, a GRW theory, but it, uh, but it uh, is, is uh, related a bit. So there's uh, evidence, uh, there's uh, other, uh, others uh, on, on a similar track. <clears throat> So on this uh, A-theory approach, uh, the, the Born process must have uh, some sort of free choice uh, involved uh, that's not reducible to stochastic randomness and operate in some sense transtemporally and transspatially and uh, be subject to the constraints of the particular uh, metaphysical system. Uh, and I'll say a little bit more about, this, about that. Um, uh, on this view, the A-theory approach, uh, quantum mechanics could be uh, seen as a complete theory of physical aspect of reality, but an incomplete theory of the whole of reality. And that's similar to uh, what Schrodinger concluded in his uh, famous book, uh, What is Life? I'm going to skip over this cartoon of uh, how M property theory uh, proposed by uh, uh, McQueen and Chalmers uh, works. 
uh, and uh, just show this uh, uh, slide of uh, Hemroff uh, proposed uh, org or uh, theory of uh, uh, consciousness being involved in the uh, moment of collapse of orchestrated objective reduction to just show that uh, I presented a, uh, a matrix uh, that compares the uh, collapse trigger and the collapse result among M property theory, or core theory, and A theory. The collapse trigger in M property theory is consciousness or some M property, possibly uh, uh, Tononi's uh, uh, phi. And the collapse trigger in uh, or, or theory is uh, uh, Penrose Planck scale uh, gravity orchestrated objective, objective reduction. This uh, had the orchestration in there. And in A theory, uh, the collapse could be triggered by several possibilities. It could be those two, or it could be purely physical decoherence, or it could be um, consciousness. So uh, the, the difference is in the uh, collapse result. So in the, the collapse result in M property theory is still stochastically random, uh, strictly Born rule. Uh, in orc or theory, the collapse result is somehow governed at least partly by Platonic ideals, the true, the good, and the beautiful, embedded in uh, space-time geometry. Um, Penrose has written uh, something along those lines. Uh, in A theory, the collapse result is uh, influenced by free will, agency. The unique events uh, versus the Born rule frequencies, in infinite repetition. Uh, now here's a, uh, here's a picture of uh, Penrose presenting a slide uh, showing his, his view that uh, uh, the collapse, the reduction, state reduction, is uh, the, the uh, really only the place where, where in physics where you can uh, get a conscious choice event happening. Um, so attempting, when attempting such a new theory, <clears throat> we want to remember or, or, or consider the experts' uh, warnings about how strange it will be. Uh, Henry Stapp is called Bell's theorem, the most profound theorem in all of science. Uh, John Bell said uh, in his view that the new way of seeing things will involve an imaginative leap that is astonishing to us. Uh, that is the new way of seeing uh, things uh, that uh, when we finally understand how Bell type uh, experiments happen. Uh, this new theory, uh, Anton Zeilinger said, this new theory will be so much stranger than current quantum mechanics. People attacking quantum mechanics now would like to have it back. Also, um, A theory can supply ontological detail to top-down causation theories. I'm going to skip over this slide uh, comparing to uh, 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 integrated information theory approach and uh, mention just mention here that A theory is explanatory to results of anomalous cognition experiments as well as explanatory, a theory is, to uh, just basic conscious choice uh, because of the structure of how a theory works. So a theory is also like uh, some other approaches such as uh, uh, critical realist philosophy of science uh, developed by British philosopher Roy Bhaskar. Uh, that's uh, me, on, me on the left with uh, Roy Bhaskar at a conference here. Um, in the sense that these types of theories, uh, on these types of theories, uh, the empirical observable uh, domain is embedded in a nested way with uh, other larger domains of reality. And then the problem that we're, we uh, have to address going forward is uh, we still need to develop a formalism to describe what happens in the reduction process. So the first step uh, toward advancing that is to apply non-Aristotelian logic. And uh, Motoyama's logic of not, he calls it, uh, to hierarchically interconnected metaphysical agents and add that to this uh, theory. Motoyama does that in his 2009 book with uh, introduction by the translator uh, Shigenori Nagatomo. Uh, 
There, Motoyama describes the experience of an ontologically fundamental one body inhabited by all beings, accessible through practice of the major meditation traditions. This is a hierarchical sequence of uh, unity experiences leading to experience of union with the creative God, or we call it, call it union with uh, the creative foundation of reality, if we want to avoid religious words. Um, and uh, this uh, process is described with the metaphysical, metaphysical equation like this, 1 plus 1 sub 2 plus dot 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 plus 1 sub n is equal to 1, where n is the number of consciousnesses or spiritual beings uh, experienced as the same physical body. This sequence is described, the same hierarchical sequence of unity experiences is described by saints in, uh, of many traditions, such as Patanjali, um, St. Teresa of Avila, St. John of the Cross, Kukai's esoteric Buddhism. And this unitive process equation it proceeds through a series of uh, negations of the metaphysical agent at one level to allow combination with other agents translationally and also hierarchically or vertically. A series of negations. A series of negations is a key point. This begins to address one of the open issues with A theory, that is the question. If metaphysical consciousnesses are reducing the physical wave function, which of the uh, competing agents would win? Uh, on this view, uh, it's the self-negated unified agents that uh, would collapse the uh, wave function. This uh, unitive equation operates according, still according to Aristotelian logic, the principle of identity, A equals A, and uh, the principle of the excluded middle, A equals not A. Those are included in Aristotelian logic. Uh, Moniyama then extends this sequence of negations to beyond the state of union with the creative foundation uh, to unity with, quote, absolute nothing. This requires a metaphysical symbolic equation similar to the other with equal to zero. Uh, that then violates Aristotelian logic because A equals A and A equals not A both on this view, on this approach. Uh, Nakatomo and Motoyama argue that versions of Motoyama's uh, type of metaphysical logic of not exist in the Mahayana Buddhist concept of emptiness, sunyata, and uh, exists in the Taoist concept of the Tao and uh, in other ancient traditions. Um, it involves, uh, quote, the rejection of the belief that there exist things corresponding to our linguistic activity that postulates the existence of substance or essence. Does that sound familiar? Yes, it does, because Bohr and Heisenberg described the, uh, co their view of the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum physics as essentially, in essentially very similar terms. Um, so the project, the obvious project then arises that we need to develop a non-Aristotelian logic equation to correlate the function of conscious agents to the reduction step of the Aristotelian logic math of quantum physics uh, by, uh, for example, Schrodinger's equation. So, conclusion. A theory provides a framework for developing a whole theory of actual reality. The next steps uh, to advance this approach are to a apply a non-Aristotelian non logic equation to correlate the function of conscious agents to the reduction of the Aristotelian logic uh, math of quantum physics, such as uh, Schrodinger equation, and to include transtemporal and transpatial metaphysical mechanisms that are necessarily entailed in these type of actual events. Uh, these type of mechanisms, uh, transtemporal, transspatial, trans are sustained by a theory as well as ancient meditation traditions, uh, experientially and modern uh, quantum physics laboratory experiments actually uh, uh, show us ne necessarily that there are these types of mechanisms operating. So, uh, uh, and also a theory needs to address the origin of qualia, qualia experience because to this point, a theory is uh, 
uh, structure for ontological functioning uh, uh, of a metaphysical conscious agents with uh, correlated with uh, physical events, uh, but how uh, the quality of experience arises is still not addressed by a theory. So the full theory will necessarily continue to be very strange. Thank you.